The Federal Inland Revenue Service is proposing the introduction of road infrastructure tax in Nigeria to drive informal sector participation in building a developed society. Uh, the Executive Chairman of Federal Inland Revenue Service, Mohamed Nami, stated he is while receiving a delegation of the Nigeria Union of Journalists led by its National President, Chris uh, Iziguzo in his office last week in Abuja. The NAMI mentioned that the proposed road infrastructure tax to be controlled by the federal agency will provide government with sufficient funding for road construction, rehabilitation and maintenance in addition, providing the needed security for roads in the country. So let's get uh, talking now. Um, Mr. Cheson Okwade is a member of the Chartered Institute of Transaction of Nigeria, CIT, and uh, he joins us via the telephone now. Thank you for your time. Uh, you, we appreciate you. Good morning, Frank, and good morning to our listeners this morning. My pleasure to be here. Yeah. So, so the Federal Inland Revenue is proposing the introduction of uh, uh, inf tax for the road usage. I mean, how do you react? Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, uh, the first reaction to this, when I heard about it, trying to understand the concept behind it, is uh, we have uh, a toll gate uh, talk that we're doing before now, which was the means of generating income in reactivity uh, road. And I asked myself, uh, why are we going fantastic individuals and corporate organizations in order to raise you know, some of these funds? Considering the fact that the major role of uh, taxation or taxing people is for government to raise revenue and finance expenditure by providing wide range of public goods to individuals. So I, I consider it as uh, multiple taxation, uh, which we go contrary to the view of the federal government in the area of uh, uh, ease of doing the business. Uh, but the other area I would have thought the FRS would be doing were some of the things that they did with uh, uh, an organization uh, in the area of tax credit for rehabilitation of uh, roads. You and I know that uh, in the month of uh, April, uh, the FIRS actually gave a tax, a tax credit to mm. uh, Dangote uh, Cement for the construction of uh, a papa or Shukir to Ojota Expressway, of which you and I have seen that that has actually gone very long. We also, they did the, the that of the uh, local jam of Bajano, uh, uh, Kama Road for the rehabilitation of uh, that particular road. So I, I feel that the good things that are actually being paid by individuals and organizations, which is to raise government uh, revenue, is uh, more than enough. Uh, rather than going to a tax certificate, why don't we pull from the resources? If we consider right. that if, if it gets to the government post, it might be difficult to dispose out. We can use this initiative of tax credit to corporate organizations uh, to support maybe their CSR in making sure that the road infrastructure in their mm. area are put to right perspective and mm. even the business that they are doing. Mm. The, the concern here again is that some expert or some uh, analyst have raised the concern that uh, we should lead the debate or conversation for a collection of toll or tax on road usage in, in Nigeria. Uh, sh should it be FR, um, Federal Inland Revenue Service or should it be Ministry of uh, Works? Yeah, it's not, it's not that it covers of... Uh uh, Ministry of Works and not that of uh, FIRS. Mm. Uh, FIRS is done with the responsibility uh, of tax administration in Nigeria and not on the aspect of uh, the issue of saying they want to regulate uh, the toll fare or the toll gate as we may have it. Uh, it's under the Ministry of Works because there are so many things that are associated with the toll fare. So uh, FIRS should concentrate more on the area of uh, uh, administration of tax, which we know and we expect them to do. 
Let's look at the impact of this. Should this scale through? Of course, it's just a proposal. Uh, I know, I remember, I recall that uh, some times ago when the Minister of Works and Housing came up with the fact that um, there has to be reintroduction of toll. I mean, a lot of people came against it. But let's look at this. Should this scale through this time? What will be the impact of, uh, of this policy, of this singular uh, policy on Nigerians? My challenge is when the uh, ambassador abolished the issue of talking. Now it, it, was, it gave me so much concerns and worry because if you travel out of the country to develop the world, it's not something that it is what is obtainable. But the approach to it, I, I understand that uh, President Obasanjo came on board then to say that the revenue being generated uh, from the Tokyo that was supposed to be used for uh, fixing some of the roads are not being used. So they overburdened the Ministry of, uh, of Work in the area of road rehabilitation. And in such manner, where you are not uh, utilizing what you're supposed to use those things for, it was abolished. Now, well, for me, if we administer the fares being charged uh, on the toll gate for the uh, uh, development and the fixing of some of the roads, uh, like we have the uh, concessioning. That uh, we had at Lekki doing some of these things, you pay no fair. It's a way of redistributing wealth. That's the truth. It's a way of redistributing wealth. You pay no fair. Those people who do not have vehicles that join public transport definitely will not feel the brand. Even though uh, yeah. uh, some of them, you give concession to them that are running the public buses of what they pay because of their going. But about for the big uh, guys, you know, those days when we have no fair. You have categories of vehicles. Uh, the, the rate at which a, 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 a car will pay is different from somebody using SUV. It's different from uh, the articulated vehicles and so on. So it's a way of balancing things. You know, the commercial people tend to pay more, more than those that use those cars for their industry. But what, do, what is expected that I would suggest is that if these things are actually collected, we should have like a dedicated account for every area we are exposed. On the fixing of that particular road, done in a quality manner, that mm. if on the long run these things are done properly, we can even have cost savings uh, on the path by reducing the no fear and the program. I start hard, but on the long run, when you have added enough and you have fixed the road, uh, you and I will be able to move pleasurably on our road without going to mechanic every now and then. Reintroducing the no fear. Even though we might feel that it's difficult now, but it's a way of making sure that our roads are put in the proper shape and in the proper uh, condition that it's supposed to be for you and I to move perfectly on the road. You are an, um, a tax expert. I mean, you talked about the fact that um, the, the Federal Inland Revenue Service has generated a lot, and of course, in their report, they've also the federal government, have, in partnership with some um, blue chip companies, have also been awarded some part of the road or the, the section of the country to construct uh, in exchange for tax rebate. Now, what kind of I mean, it would seem that it's an uh, issue of accountability here. So, what kind of uh, monitoring mechanism should be put in place to ensure accountability in the way some of these resources are deployed? Yeah, uh, it, it's quite simple. Transparency must play the order of the day here. Before you venture into the rehabilitation of any road under your system, you have to apply. Definitely the uh, uh, FRS wing, in conjunction with the Ministry of Road, because it's not definitely going to be Ministry of uh, uh, FRS carrying this out alone. It has to be in conjunction with the Ministry of Water and Housing, because they are saddled with our responsibility of road rehabilitation. Bring in your, uh, your proposal because they are doing it. Possibly they are getting their contract like Dangutina is making use of cement of it, some of those things. Can we have the cost implication to this? Can they go through very, uh, you know, the, the bidding process to make sure that we get the best pricing for this? And if it's agreeable, it's just like you are supposed to pay for the fixing of that road. But rather than you crediting us and going through the bottleneck of disposing some of these cars, of saying we need this approval, we need that approval. When you want to have this, we will give you a credit uh, from the tax you are supposed to pay that you should take care of those expenses, which in turn too, we assist some of these production companies. Because what you have done is that they can play around even with the fund that is supposed to be, you know, done to, the, uh, to, to begin. 
given to FRS and in turn it paid back to them. So you can play around with it with your cash flow you know, and then do justice to see why you still go ahead to create some of these things that is expected from the government. It is it's going to be a good initiative if it's properly followed. So you can see the time it took in fixing this uh, uh, Apapa Oshudi Expressway to Ojota when the, the action was there, but as we speak, is being concluded because there will be serious bottlenecks on the part of the uh, private sector. All we need to do is to have an agreement that the cost that they are presenting, of which we want to give tax repeat on, uh, repeat on is uh, what is, uh, uh, is, is a good level playing ground that uh, nobody can contest in the nearest future. And that's where we say transparency needs to play the order of the day. And also, it will stop them. The Ministry of Work needs to have. Uh, a monitoring team that will check the quality of the delivery of right. what is expected. So definitely there will be specification before this is committed to them. And the monitoring team will make sure that it do what they promise to do to specification. Mm. Now, w would you say that the government, I mean, since the, uh, this administration came into power, they've been exploring uh, tax, various um, different kinds of tax to generate revenue, to fund infrastructure. But as it seems now, it, it looks like um, the, perhaps the government has exhausted all its options as regards uh, revenue generation via tax. Would you say that the government have exhausted all these options in terms of uh, revenue generation via tax? Yeah, I would think they've not. They've not. Well, Frank, it, it seems that they've exploded, it, but no. It's just, uh, 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 I will call it even fake. Because the environment is not consistent, mm. there is high level of insecurity. Businesses are actually diving rather than creating the, the, the growth expected of every business is uh, because of the level of insecurity is not what they are getting. And you know you don't pay tax if there is no income. Uh, tax is based on your income. And when there are no transactions, there is no pay tax to pay. Uh, remember that uh, we have a part of the uh, uh, federal government initiative and the ease of doing business is that certain class of people are exempted from paying uh, VAT. Those that are specified uh, 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 million and, be, and below are exempted from it. So you discover that it has reduced some of the influence that they expect. But security plays a major role. If you look at the heat uh, of COVID-19 of businesses, uh, it's enormous. So most mm. businesses that are supposed to be growing as we speak are struggling. Even some are dead. And that is why it seems that uh, more concentration are given to those companies that are on ground now to make sure that they, they get the best they can get out of them. So if the government can go back and retrace the aspect of security to make sure that uh, individuals that have in the state uh, businesses can move stably. Look right. at what happened even on Abuja Kaduna Rail where people transact their business as we speak. They have right. cut down the bit of, uh, 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 of carrying out business in that area. Because do you know people travel from Kaduna to Abuja on daily basis, they will go and come back to their residence after carrying out their business. As we speak, they have interjected that kind of business flow and how do you right. expect the people to pay that? Because mm. taxes are paid on income, not on any other thing. So government should look in that area to make sure that security is really high up to make sure that everywhere is safe for business to survive. Well, I think we need to leave it there. Thank you so much, Cherson Okwande. is a member of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. Thank you for your time on Business Breakfast. Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure always to have you. Yeah.